Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Um, God told me to get back on here because a lot of people are getting confused of my testimony. So one thing about God, God will always make it clear. So let me make some things clear. And if you see my title, it says from FBI to gangster. So let me go ahead and tell y'all something because it, you know, it seems like, you know, I'm leaving out half of the story. So God want me to clear it up. So, cause people, some of you say, well, I thought she story for the FBI. I thought she was a gangster. Okay, so my title's from FBI to Gangster. So in the late 80s, um, I was going to Brunswick Junior College, which is in Glencoe, Georgia. And that is also where the FBI, Federal Training Enforcement Agency, where they train all the FBI agents. So um, there was only like two blacks working there at the time. And I won't say any names on purpose. So um, somebody had got me on because you have to you have to know somebody that knows somebody. Y'all know, y'all know how this roll. So I got in and, um, my life changed. You know, um, I was a straight A student in college. I mean, most successful, voted most successful. I had the, you know, honestly, I probably not the person that you would expect to be who I am today because I was a different person. Um, me and my boyfriend at the time, we were chosen most successful. We were the, the couple of the college. Y'all, y'all know, I'm trying to give y'all a little run around. I mean, I was totally a different person, just to be honest with you. I was very timid. Um, I didn't talk much. Uh, you know, I was very slim, well, about maybe a two or a three. I'm trying to give you a, I was pretty much trying to do the way the world said to do it. Go to college, get a good career. I knew the right people. I, I'm doing everything right. But I'm going to be honest with you, it all felt wrong all the time. But, you know, I played the little role, meaning that, hey, hold your head down and just do what you're told to do, Deanna. And so this was the time also when Ronald Reagan was president. He used to fly in there all the time at the um, FBI agency. I would see him and, you know, it was only us three blacks. So we were just like, we see, we don't see. We hear, we don't hear. I never understood. So let me tell you all what happened, what ended that career. And what led me to be a gangster. And I'm just being real with you. So um, they had this woman. And everything was going fine. I guess she was jealous of me, just to be honest with you. She was a Caucasian woman. And I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just telling my story, my testimony. So don't nobody say, oh, you're coming against a certain race. No, I'm not. So anyway, long story short, she would always mess with me. And I would go and I would tell people, I said, look, I know this woman is a high official, but every day she got me doing extra stuff. I mean, she would just mess with me all the time. Now, here I am. I'm told y'all I'm like a size two or three. Y'all hear me, right? This woman is like 300 something pounds. I guess after a year or something, I'm just going to be real. And some of y'all going to laugh because my friends know this story, but this is the first time I'm publicly saying it because I, um, I want to be clear about my story because I don't want people to say, well, she says she worked for the FBI, then she says she this, all right? So anyway, long story short, what ended up happening is one day <laughs> she met Deanie. <laughs> That's my nickname. I picked that woman up. That's right. I'm hundred something pounds. I picked that woman up. And I said, leave me alone. <laughs> and I got her on the wall, right? I picked her up and um, she said, put me down like that, right? And I was just so embarrassed because she kept, she got me out of character. You know, after a year, nobody would do anything. And you know why the higher up, you're supposed to just shut up. But I guess I wasn't having it. She would make me work extra, do her work, do even personal work, you know, on the computer and everything. And so um, I left that day and they kept calling me to come back. I, I resigned. I just, I don't know. I guess I was ashamed just to be honest with y'all. And I know that I probably could have had a career there because I was very good at what I was doing. Um, I was working in an office where we, we actually fingerprint and we train all the FBI agents. So y'all know, I know some things right now you understand. So that's how I ended there. Um, I just never went back. You know, they called, they called, they wanted me back, but I was too scared. If I did that, I said, Lord, I don't know what else, what else inside of me I would do. If, Cause I know she wasn't going to work. So the, the, it wasn't going to change. And I guess I just didn't want to go back into that situation. So after that, I ended up meeting a guy and he sold drugs and y'all know the story. I guess that's why I say from FBI to gangster. And I mean, he was a big time drug dealer from Miami. And so my life took a turn, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, all know. And so it took a long, a bad turn. I'm not going to lie. And that's when I got into, let's say things that I probably shouldn't have, you know, and, um, a lot of things happened. You know, I ended up being incarcerated for 18 months and it was just, it was just a, it, I tell you one thing, I didn't expect my life to go that way, but, 
um, it was something else because when I was incarcerated, that's when I started speaking. Uh, I, the warden actually came to me and he said, I want you to join our Toastmasters. I said, what is Toastmasters? And to be honest with you, it was so crazy because they had a guy named Jared. I, I, I remember him so good. He was an anointed man of God. And so, um, I started getting me out of my cell and I was like, man, what is this? Now you got to understand. I had never been in trouble. I was supposed to get probation, but I understand that God was stopping some things. Cause when I asked God, I said, God, what is this about? He said, Deanna, at the rate you were going, you're going to get killed for real. And I said, okay, God, I said, I don't really like it like this. You know, jail was, a, that, that, I don't, I don't wish that on nobody. So I had to lift weights cause them girls, it was crazy. That's what you see today. I think God trained me to be hard cause I wasn't hard before I went in there. I was scared. Then they put me with this girl talking about she was going to kill me. So I ain't going to even lie to y'all. I transformed. That's why I transformed in jail. I ain't going to lie to y'all. You can ask anybody that know me. And so long story short, um, they were being funny. They put that girl in my, um, in my cell talking about she's going to kill somebody. So I couldn't sleep at night. So I decided, I guess what? I'm not going to be scared no more. So one day she came in that cell. I closed that cell and I said, let's go. <laughs> Y'all already know. And I think who you see today was born. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. And so long story short, they, um, you know, Sergeant Tyrone, that was his name. He was a Christian. He would take me out. He would say, you know, you're not like everybody else. I said, man, look, I'm trying to survive. I said, I don't even know what's going on here. God got me. You know, I was mad at God. I ain't going to lie. But believe it or not, that's where I kind of caught the Holy Ghost one night. It was cell four. I never forget. Well, long story short, here's what happened. Um, I started going all around Louisiana in chains and minister. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't ready for me. And so long story short, it was crazy. Um, I helped like I don't know how many people get their GED. Y'all y'all starting to see how the training went, right? Almost felt like Joseph in a way. Well, long story short, it would it got so good to where I could go out on the weekends and do stuff. And I'm talking about like just to the next door, you know, and clean up and I was part of a elite crew. Y'all understand what I'm saying. And so long story short, that's why I started um speaking in Toastmasters. My first sermon was Samson and Delilah. So I told y'all what my first sermon was, but I never told y'all where it was. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And this this was in the nineties, right? So long story short, what ended up happening, um, what did happen? Okay, I'm trying to recall out everything for y'all because I'm this is the first time I ever told a story publicly like this. Um, honestly, I had been ashamed, but I guess when God delivers you, you're not ashamed anymore of what you've been through and what you went through because it's going to help other people. So long story short, what ended up happening is um, I remember that, oh, that's why God anointed my hands. So one night I was in my cell and my hands started burning and I didn't know what was going on. So then the next day at Toastmasters, um, Gerald told me, he said, Deanna, God anointed you. And I just looked at him crazy because how the heck you knew? Because I'm sure you was in your cell. You know what I'm saying? And I said, okay, what's going on? So that's when I started crying. I said, what's happening? He said, you're being, uh, God is anointing you. That is where I had most of those dreams I tell y'all about, about me um, picking the sword out and say that I was a forewarner. I didn't understand all that then. I didn't. I just wanted to look. I wanted to do my time and get the heck up out of there, right? Didn't even understand why I was there, truth be told. But now I understand the whole thing. I was in training for this. So long story short, um, notice all that from FBI to, to jail. Y'all don't understand me. So anyway, long story short, um, I went. And we were talking about drugs, and it was so funny because all the schools that I went to, the children, they would want to take me home with them. And I said, nah, I got to go this way. Oh, they start crying. So I always had a, um, a passion for the youth. So when I got out, I actually became a youth minister at Manny Baptist Church in Manny, Louisiana, under Reverend Clovis Rogers. That was in 96. Now, um, you got to understand what ended up happening. That's when my mother died and he became, you know, he ordained me a minister and I had my, now I had my first real summit and a church. So that's pretty much my testimony as far as from FBI to thug life or gangster life, whatever you want to call it. And, um, it's been a journey, you guys. I mean, <laughs> I didn't understand it then, 
but I definitely understand it. Now, that's why I say you can't throw away people and you can't put people on this pedestal because here I am working with the FBI. I never thought I would ever be in a jail so Y'all don't understand me. But I have to be honest with you. I think that's where most of my training was. You know, unfortunately, you know, it didn't feel good. I didn't like it. I was like, I, I didn't think that was fair. I never got any trouble. And if you know about the system, most of the time you get, um, you know, you get probation. I was like, God, oh, what's going on? This is not funny. And so I just wanted to clarify things because people were like, wait a minute. First she said she used to work for the FBI. Then she said she was. <laughs> so now you understand how it happened. Whew, never told that story publicly. I'm telling you, y'all, I would have never did so much if I know he was going to make me tell everything. Y'all better not be doing all kind of stuff because before y'all die, he's going to make y'all tell it. <laughs> I ain't lying. I ain't lying. But anyway, God bless you. God keep you. And I pray that um, y'all just be strong, man, because I'm going to tell you right now, the enemy is after your mind. The enemy is after your mind. He's trying to make you fear. You got to pray over your mind and say, I shall not fear. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers for that is who we are. God bless. <laughs>